So what's up guys, uh, welcome back, this is your boy The Adam's Link, how you guys doing, welcome to another video And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you guys are watching this video from I hope you guys are very much doing okay Well, a lot of people are worried and scared about what might happen to Nigeria superstar rapper singer Fats You know, but himself is not even worried According to what, uh, you know, in, in, in a recent interview, while we were discussing him about why he decided to make that uh, video, of course, you know, the popular music video, Mr. Yakubu, we are addressing what happened during the NSAS period. He said he's not afraid of death. He said, I don't fear death. I would rather go down fighting for justice. You know, most of these uh, public speakers or anyone on social media who is very outspoken or in any, even not on social media, in any community that is speaking against the government, very, very, very outspoken and his voice is loud. One of the fear that they used to have, that, that other have on behalf of them is fear of death because those people that he or she is speaking against might be ruthless ruthless to the point that they would decide to shut him or her up permanently and you know shutting someone permanently it only means one thing bye well people are kind of like worried about fast what if someone someone out there decided to be like you know what fast you are talking too much it's about time you go down what would then happen well, for those of you who are worried, just know it now. Fat Ed is not afraid of death. They would rather go down fighting. Oh, great one, great one, great one. Not all people can easily say that. Not even myself. Let me be completely honest. Not all people can easily say that and not even myself. So far as I uh, have my utmost respect, like I've said before, yeah, let's talk about uh, the election per se. If you want to still watch that interview, I think, I think you check on Arise TV, you check that interview or fast. Let's talk about the election per se. According to NHRC, they said 88 died in 2023 general election. 2023 election, 88 persons died. Well, just exactly what Samuel Walu said, he said there is no evidence of violence in the 2023 general, or not only the general election, 2023 election, there, there was no election evidence of election violence. So that is to say, the videos, the videos that we were seeing on social media, the live interview, the Chinese TV showing, the RS TV and other media are showing, all those things were completely false. So according, sorry, that was um, misunderstood, not Sawolu. According to People Gazette, they said APC claims no evidence of voters' intimidation, violence in Lagos State. Of course, we saw this popular picture of this woman's staff twice. And the APC visited this woman, PDP visited this woman, Labour Party also visited her as well in Lagos State and unfortunately the APC are saying there is no there is no evidence of intimidation violence in Lagos <laughs> they said the all progressive uh, congress in Lagos State that state has dismissed rival claims that its members perpetrated violence during the just concluded election and they said it is shared falsehood that cannot be substantiated state publicity secretary say Oladejo declared a news conference in Ikeja on Thursday Mr. Oladejo urged the opposition to stop playing the victim he said that the conference was to review the election and comment on some of the false allegations the opposition party has been spying in the media space. And according to NHRC, they said 88 people.
who died in 2023 election in no 88 <laughs> 88 we have seen other people other countries are conducting election you won't see a single blood share in fact no one will even argue no one will even quarrel not even quarrel talk more of a single blood share they will just come vote and leave why is it that voting in this part of the world it must resort to violence because some person just feel like it's within their right to tell the who and who to vote for it's within their right to force you to vote for their candidate it's within their right to tell you not to vote if you are not voting for their candidate it's within their right to destroy ballot buses there are people who come with impunity to buy it or voting center and just carry ballot board and destroy it and nobody will talk nothing we saw the videos now we saw everything that went on there you know with the security personnel and everything that were not available everywhere you know we saw everything that was happening then that will lead me to talk about uh, mr uh, mc Uluwomo. you know with the entrances that he was making then well guess what the Nigerians were, have been calling that M. Solomon should be tried, should be made to face the law for his entrances and for threatening the Igbo's voters in Lagos. But <laughs> the police are saying that M. Solomon has no immunity. For those of you who are saying, sue M. Solomon, arrest M. Solomon, they are saying he has no immunity. That if you want to sue him, you should have evidence. That you can go on and sue a single one more if you have evidence. But I believe it's within the federal government's responsibility to go after anyone more making a public threat. That person doesn't necessarily need to be sued. It's within the right of the DSS, the state security services, to immediately call that person to order, invite that person. The public do not need to spend money on suing anyone privately. The DSS should be able to do that immediately, even before the suing, to ascertain if that guy is going uh, astray to check him out well. But now they are saying, the guy did there now, he has no immunity. If you want to get him arrested, go and get him arrested and sue him with evidence. I don't know the facts. I don't know the facts. So, but people should examine the facts. And if, in truth, he has broken the law, of course, he must pay for it. It's as simple as ABC. So it's not, but my point, my point, which I want to make, because we all diminish this country when we, when we actually exaggerate what happens. That's my point. My point is that you have an election where you have this number of polling units and you have less than 1% that has a problem and we now make it look as if that one percent is more important than 99 percent i think that's just outrageous okay well and we should not diminish our country mm. and say the election is bad no no this is a great election yes elections are coming so what uh, that's uh the deputy governor of lagos state what he's saying is that so if one person is brutalized we shouldn't generally we, we we shouldn't generally say the election was bad. That is, if there is bloodshed in one particular polling unit and there is success in other political units, we should say, oh, the election was great. <laughs> well, all this kind of statement, uh, what am I going to say now? Huh? <laughs> oh, God damn it. Oh. Mm. Well, for those of you who are calling, according to, the, uh, according to the state government of Lagos State, for those of you who are calling for the arrest of uh, M. Suluomo, of course, you know, it's for the ruling party, most especially uh, Tinubu. He's uh, one diehard fan of uh, Tinubu. Nothing can uh, stop him from supporting Tinubu. That if you want to get in to arrest him, then I think that, they should, that you should go to police. To go to police, submit your evidence and submit your claim, suing that he doesn't have immunity. 
But if it's to be another opposition now doing all those kind of things, like what we saw about that, uh, that uh, uh, there's one king in one community king in Lagos State that was recently that is recently held in DSS was saying he's going to invite IPOC to Lagos State. <laughs> Well, I, I I think it was coming from a point of anger. Well, it shouldn't be saying that, or you know, we, we don't allow the other people to move you to to say something because you know definitely the DSS will definitely come for you. So that's what they said, guys. Sue, if you want, if you should have any issue. Now let's listen to what Faz has to say. We have to look beyond. When I say we, I mean the ordinary citizens. We have to look beyond all these differences, all these things that the ruling party always capitalizes on and weaponizes against us. We have to look beyond these things, things like tribe, religion. These are differences. Everyone is entitled to have their, di their differences, but these things don't define us. At the end of the day, we're all Nigerian. I, when I look at my fellow Nigerian, I don't see their tribe. I don't see anything else but another Nigerian. And going into these elections, going to cast my vote, I was looking for competence. I was looking for who would do the job. Who, who do I think is capable of doing the job? I wasn't looking at, oh, who is from my tribe? And that's why it, it was really, really, really infuriating when I was getting a lot of these messages and people sort of attacking me and saying, uh, uh, you know, throwing around all these uh, slogans, these slogans just fueling bigotry, uh, uh, stuff like, oh, Yoruba Ronu, or, <laughs> you know, it, it just didn't make any sense to me because this is not a war of tribes. This has absolutely nothing to do with your tribe or your religion. This is about competence. And with everything that we suffer as a country, with all the problems that we're facing, it is so sad that in 2023, so many people allowed that tribal sentiment to get to them. And they went to vote based on tribe. And, oh, man, it was, it was just so sad to see. And, you know, like I said earlier, on the only way we can move past all this is to really, really overlook all these sentiments and just look at competence. Because if we do not have competent politicians, we will remain where we are as a country. Well, beautiful world from my fans, but uh, we already know it will be extremely hard for a tribe not to come to play when it comes to Nigeria politics. We are not there yet, and I do not think we are ready to be there yet. But God will continue to help us. Well, thank you guys for watching the boy Gadam's link. Have a wonderful day. Stay blessed. Bye.